Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, I trust you are feeling bright and blessed this morning in love with Jesus and anticipating great things in your journey today. Well, we're continuing our look into the book of Job, and today we find ourselves in Job chapter 11. Now, Job has just finished his response to Bildad, and now we are going to hear from Zophar, the third and final friend of Job. Now, Zophar has a scathing review and response to what Job has just said. So let's pick up in chapter 11, and let's look at the first six verses. It says, Then answered Zophar the Naamathite, and said, Should not the multitudes of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? Should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, shall no man make thee ashamed? For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee, and that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. So basically, Zophar is saying, how do you think we can remain silent when you speak such foolish words? You continue to claim your innocence, but you have to be guilty. That's the only reason that God would judge you. Now, we've covered this in past videos, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but it's obvious that they continue to misunderstand the way God moves among men and how he uses pain and suffering in our lives. And all three friends seem to be in unison in their understanding of this. And so it's Job one against three, Zophar, Bildad, and Eliphaz. And this is why these three men are going to be rebuked. But Zophar asks a very interesting question in verse seven and eight. Can you, by searching, find out God? Can you find out the Almighty unto perfection? Well, of course, the answer to this is no, and he tells us that in the next few verses. These mysteries are high as the heavens, so how could you ever get a hold of them? They're deeper than hell. How would you ever know them? Their measure is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. And so basically, he's telling Job, look, there's something that you're not seeing, because the wisdom of God, the mysteries of God are so profound that even though you think that you understand, even though you think that you've examined your heart, there's something you're missing. There's sin in your life. He knows vain men. He sees wickedness. Will he not then consider it? In other words, Job, you don't see your sin, but God sees your sin, and that is enough to bring the judgment upon you, your house, and your family. But now look at verse 14, and this is something that each of us can take as a promise unto ourselves. We can take this as a personal promise, and these are words of truth that he speaks. And if you would allow me, I'd like to read it out of the Message Bible, because most likely you've already read it out of the King James Bible. He says unto Job, still, if you set your heart on God and reach out to him, and this is what it's speaking to us as well, friends. So take this message into your own hearts. If you set your heart on God and you reach out to him, if you scrub your hands of sin and you refuse to entertain evil in your home, I love the way that says that, in your home. How many things do we have in our homes that entertain evil? But he says, if you refuse to entertain these evils in your home, then you will be able to face the world unashamed. You will keep a firm grip on life, guiltless and fearless. You'll forget your troubles. They'll be like old faded photographs. Your world will be washed in sunshine. Every shadow dispersed by day spring. Let me read that again. Your world will be washed in sunshine, in the light of Jesus. And every shadow, every anxiety, every perplexing worry of this world will be dispersed by the day spring, by the day star, by the very light of Jesus himself. You will be full of hope. 
You'll relax, confident again. You'll look around, sit back, and take it easy. Why? Because your trust is in the living God, not in the circumstances or the events of this world. Expansive, without a care in the world. You'll be hunted out by many for your blessing. Now let's go back to the King James Version for a moment because I love the way the King James Version puts verse 19. It says, you will lie down and none will make you afraid. You know, there are commercials on TV about people who can take these pills that will help them sleep. And the majority of people in the world have a problem sleeping. And the reason they do is because they're not at peace when they sleep. But if we're in Christ, we can lay down each and every night confident, knowing where we stand in him, and we can get a good night's rest. And that's what this is saying. If you will cleanse your hand of sin, not allow sin in your home, you will lie down and none will make you afraid. You'll be afraid of nothing because you serve the almighty God. He is your defense. He is on your side. He's fighting for you. So you don't have to fight for yourself. That's what Paul means when he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, wherefore come out from among them, come out from among the practices and the ways of the world around you. Be separate, saith the Lord, do not touch the unclean thing, then I will receive you. So there are requirements in order for the Almighty to receive us and to pass his favor onto us. He says, I will be a father unto you, and you will be my sons and my daughters. But now look at chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness, note this, of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Friends, we've been called to a life of holiness, a way of living that separates us from the rest of the world. You see, what we're being told here is that the moment that we cleanse our hands, we repent and come clean before God, at that moment we earn his favor. Note that I said his favor, not his blessing. There are many people in the world that walk and live under blessing, but it doesn't mean that they have God's favor. There are people who have all that they want in this life, all the possessions, all the money, all the fame, all the fortune, and they do not know God, nor does God know them. And so friends, I hope you can say with me today that you would much rather have the favor of God than you would the blessing of God. I would rather have the favor of God and be in a dark, cold prison cell than to have all this world offers and lose my soul. Isn't that what Jesus said? What does it gain a man to have the whole world and to lose his soul? Friends, it is the favor of God that we are seeking. And we only obtain that favor when we cleanse ourselves before him, when we purify ourselves before him through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life and has infilled us with his spirit. And it is then and only then we'll walk in the power and the joy and the victory of the God whom we serve. And we will be able to lay down each night and have a restful night of peace, a restful night of sleep, knowing that even though we sleep, God is in control. Jesus is on the throne. Well, hallelujah, friends. I love you this morning. I pray that your day will be full of blessing and joy. I pray a song will be upon your heart and praise upon your lips. Now, as the Almighty the ageless one, the King of kings and Lord of lords, as he wills. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.